And while activity recently developing uh, schemes for um, having suspension lines uh, that you can detach your hammock from, so in the middle of such suspensions there will be a whoopee sling to make the structural ridge line adjustable, and then at the ends of it will be whoopee sling, something like that, going to the tree, and then at the attachment points you hang the hammock. Now the attachment points are invariably, uh, with a few exceptions, um, piece of hardware, like an SMC ring or maybe a Dutch beaner, uh, which makes it quite convenient to attach all these various cords that are going uh, different places. Now, I've been doing lots of splicing lately. In particular, I've been doing a lot of splicing of uh, diamond knots. I put diamond knots at the corners of the bridge hammocks that I make. And so I got to wondering, just for the fun of it, uh, whether or not one could do the same kind of suspension, but not use hardware at all. Uh, just use a diamond knot and then attach something over the diamond knot, like some sort of soft shackle. Um, but it needs a name. And so let's give it a name with a regrettable acronym. So let's call it the Hardware Free Detachable Hammock Suspension, or the HFDHS. Well, how would that work? The idea is to put um, a diamond knot or some other kind of stopper knot at the end of a whoopee sling. So when I'm making the whoopee sling, so here's one end of it, I take uh, six inches or so of another piece of uh, cord and then tie the diamond knot and then I can take the remainder that's going up the cord, probably use a little less here, and then uh, do a, a lock brummel right at that point, and then bury that line and finish these edges off. And so now I would have a diamond knot at the end where I could do something. So I've done that, of course. Here is a completed whoopee sling. Here we have the berry towards one end, the line coming out of the berry. And here is the diamond knot with that uh, very off the excess of the diamond knot with the finished edges. Now the way that I'm going to attach a hammock to this is I'll take a continuous cord ring and I have put on this um, a whipping knot. We'll say a little bit more about that. But we can take this and Lark's head the uh, continuous loop onto the end of a hammock. This particular one is my uh, war bonnet El Dorado, the elusive El war bonnet El Dorado. And now, loop from the continuous loop through the diamond knot and push the slider up. And now we've got a whoopee sling attachment to uh, the hammock. Uh, so that's sort of cute and doesn't involve any hardware. Um, the next thing would be to attach a ridge line somehow to this. But we'll see more uh, about that uh, momentarily. What I want to focus on right now is this whipping knot because this turns out to be very, very handy. Not only will I use the whipping knot here, but I would also like to use uh, a whipping knot on the body of the whoopee sling loop itself as a slider that I can bring up um, and close the loop a little bit when I've hung the whoopee sling on the, on the um, Marlin spike bag uh, to help keep it from popping off. And uh, we can use it as a vehicle to see how this particular uh, whipping knot is tied. I'm going to use a knot now that's normally used to keep the end of a hemp rope from fraying. It's called a whipping knot. In our application, take about two inches and then I'm going to start some wraps. First wrap comes around and it'll catch the edge. And then we'll wrap four or five times. I don't want the wraps too tight. Now the next objective is to bring this end through those loops onto the other side. So it's very handy to use a loop turner for this. comes through. Tighten it up enough. You want it has to have enough tension to keep the knot together, but not too much to constrain things. And uh, if it was an ordinary whipping knot, then I would just finish off these ends and I would be done. Um, however, for this application, it's easy for this knot to accidentally be pulled right off of the end of the whoopee sling. And you don't want to do that. So we'll take one of these ends and bring it through in between the two big pieces of cord so that if we can fasten that down, this can't uh, be pulled off of the end as before. So the trick here is to come up through the back loops, grab it, bring it through, 
now we see that um, we have that block. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, though it's really not rigorously necessary on this side. But for the aesthetics of symmetry, come in before through the back loops, and we want to catch that one over the top of the first loop that encounters, sort of an anchor. And now we've got a sliding whipping knot. Uh, to finish off of these ends, um, we'll cut them and uh, melt them. Cut a bit short. And this is, this is in it. And that comes to a nice little bulb. So that'll keep it from sliding through. And now when I put the whoopee sling over the, uh, the Merlin spike hitch, I can slide this up the top and just hold it in place. And then as I'm adjusting the whoopee sling, this will bind a little bit, but I can loosen it up uh, relatively easily. Using Dynaglide is all the rage these days with suspensions, and I'd like to be able to use this idea with Dynaglide as well. So, so I'm going to create a separate button. Uh, I took a length of uh, am steel and uh, created a little loop, and then a diamond knot. In this particular one, I took the two ends and then uh, and I finished them off into one. It's just a little funky. And I'll use this as an end piece and attach the Dynaglide. So I have done this in a complete whoopee slang. So here's my little button with the more traditional ends finished off, uh, tied to the Dynaglide in a way that we will soon see. Um, here is the, uh, the line emerging from the whoopee sling berry, a full whoopee sling. Here we have a little slider. Now, as we've seen before, we can attach a continuous loop uh, onto this and go to the hammock. Uh, the next thing is to uh, deal with the uh, structural ridge line, which can be a whoopee sling itself. Need to measure that carefully. And I have one here that's been made. And what I did with the fixed eye here is I put again one of my little sliders. The reason for that is I want to be able to tighten it up. And so I can slot this over uh, the diamond knot and tighten it up. And that'll keep it from going anywhere. And there is still room here to, uh, to bring in uh, the continuous loop and work that in. Uh, to the hammock. Lots of room for everybody. On the other end of the whoopee sling, uh, I'll put uh, a slider again, only this is not going to the marlin spike. This is going to go to the other, to the other hitch. So the other diamonds had not. So for that whoopee sling, pass that through and I can tighten it up. Now admittedly, uh, the whoopee sling will bind a little bit when you want to change it, but that's okay because with structural ridge line, once you've set it, you don't want to change it very much. One last thing I'll show you for the whoopee sling on the structural ridge line. Uh, here's the berry for it. There's a bit of a tail, gives you uh, two feet of adjustability. And then at the very end here, um, I've tied uh, another uh, kind of a, a whipping knot, a finishing knot, uh, just to keep the end up out of the way. And so once you've attached the whoopee sling, you just pull that and uh, that keeps the, the extra cord up out of the way. So after I will show you how to tie uh, the Dynaglide to um, the button, uh, we'll take it outside and uh, go for a real hang. It's pretty simple to attach the button to a smaller diameter line like a Dynaglide. I'm going to take a length of about 10 inches or so and I'm going to thread the Dynaglide through this loop out to the 10 inches or so. And I'm going to start some wraps. And these are exactly the kind of wraps that we did for the whipping knot. We catch the edge and go around maybe five times. And I'm going to pass this end back through this loop following the line that went through. Not on the opposite side, but the same side. So I can see uh, that line disappear into the loop. And so I'm going to pull this end through that side in exactly the same way. tension things up and I can take this side now and do a locked brummel here 
and then bury it. Now this knot is called um, the Albright knot and the usual practice with the Albright knot um, is to have loose ends on either side and you use more wraps but in this particular application since we're going to do a bury uh, then we don't need to do that. We can use five wraps rather than ten wraps. We'll hang this now. Uh, along the suspension without the hammock. You can just attach the hammock. Although you could leave the suspension attached if, all the time if you liked. No particular reason not to, except for compactness. That's all nice and tidy. Then we'll take it down to the other end. And we're ready for a hang. I'll reap the benefit of my labors now. My beautifully elusive El Dorado. Uh, as they say, good night, Irene. So some miscellaneous items. Amsteel and Dynaglide is very strong in the long direction, uh, but this type of cord um, is weak when it gets heavily compressed, which is why it's better to splice this stuff than to knot it. Uh, because of that, I would not recommend uh, putting something like a Celtic knot or a Chinese knot at the end of a single strand of the whoopee sling uh, because, uh, well, that's just one strand. When we're using uh, the diamond knot, then there are two strands and uh, that will help uh, distribute such compression forces as there are. In fact, on these buttons that I made, I made that out of heavier amp steel than I use for uh, whoopee slings in particular. Uh, this is, uh, I made the buttons out of one eighth amp steel. So that's just a, a point uh, to the wise. Uh, the second point is that if you get a little nervous about using um, a saw shackle to attach your hammock to the ridge line, uh, you can still use this idea to, um, to make the diamond knot uh, to terminate um, a loop that's large enough so that you can lark's head this onto the end of the hammock itself. And so now uh, you can use this diamond head knot as a, as a jam for a structural ridge line, which you would then uh, feed over this end or, or down through this line as well. So, and the last thing to show is how we can uh, create uh, sort of an all-in-one suspension like you can get from uh, whoopieslings.com uh, uh, only using no hardware. And so at one end uh, we'll have here a soft shackle replacing a uh, carabiner. Of course there's nothing new about that. That's one of the reasons we uh, like soft shackles. At the other end now we're going to tie on a whoopie sling and we're going to use the Albright knot to do that in the same way as we did uh, with the button. This, now this is just a whoopie sling and you can see this is the end coming out of the whoopie sling berry. Now if we go down to see what's at the business end of the whoopee sling, what we find is that we have one of our knots, one of our buttons, and uh, we have a sheath on uh, the loop of the button around which the whoopee sling goes. And so this is permanently attached to the whoopee sling, and when it's under tension, then the sheathing will uh, protect uh, one knot from another. Remains to see how long this uh, holds up in the field. It's an idea worth, uh, worth exploring, and if that doesn't work, there are other things one can try. So uh, when we <coughs> attach it, we'll have um, our cord ring, and we'll have this end attached to the hammock, and bring it in just as before. So if we also have a ridge line attached here that goes to the corresponding arrangement at the other end, then we have, um, as advertised, um, an all-in-one uh, suspension system. So uh, that's it. I think that it's uh, time to go back to that hammock and then take a real nap this time. So happy trails.